following by the Holy Spirit. Now, the parents of Jesus went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents did not know it. But supposing him to be in the group, they went a day's journey. But then they began to search for him according, uh, among the relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been searching for you in great distress. And Jesus said to them, Why are you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And they did not understand the saying that he spoke to them. And he went down with them, and came to Nazareth, was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature, and in favor with God and with man. The Gospel of Lord. You may be Jesus in Jerusalem. 
and plug not finding. Now, you might ask, why did it take them three days to find Jesus in Jerusalem? Let me just offer a suggestion. Okay, because it doesn't say here, but I want to offer a suggestion. When they went to Jerusalem, they looked at all the places where a kid might go. Nowadays, when we would look for our child, we'd go to their friend's house, see if they're there. Or see if they're at the arcade. Or see if they're at the pizza joint. Or see if they're somewhere where kids hang out. So they looked at all those places and did not find him at all. Finally, they went into the temple, probably to seek God's advice about where to find him. And there he was, in the temple, and he was listening to the teachers, asking questions. He was preaching, even at that age. And his mom and dad are frustrated. I'm sure they're happy they found him, but they're frustrated. They've wasted three days of their life trying to find Jesus. Those of you who are parents understand that your child is not with you, not where you think they ought to be, and you get a little bit better. And they go up to Jesus. And Mary decides that she's going to dress him down. And she says to Jesus, Son, why have you done this to your father and I? We've been looking everywhere for you. And Jesus answers her and tells him, you know what he says? Why would you open for me? And actually, what we need to understand is he's saying to her, why are you looking for me everywhere? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And with those words, there's a revelation here that they needed and we need as well. And you know what that is? Sometimes we forget who Jesus is. See, Mary and Joseph had that revelation right in the beginning that Jesus is the Son of God. They knew that. However, in their daily life, they were so busy doing the things that families do with the children that they have that sometimes they would forget that this person, this Jesus, is not just a human being. He is, in fact, the Son of God. You can understand why they might forget once in a while. Because of the fact that when Jesus, yes, he's the Son of God, but they had to do for him everything that a parent would have to do for a child. Change him, dress him, train him up, take him to synagogue, work, you know, help him learn the scriptures, all of that. They did all those things with him. And so sometimes they were so used to seeing Jesus as a little boy that they also forgot that he was the Son of of God. Always was the Son of God. Always will be the Son of God. See, Jesus never forgot who he is. He always knew he was the Son. But sometimes he would be to forget. And that's something that we need to ask ourselves. Do we often forget, or even once in a while forget, who Jesus is? Do we take a look at him as a historical figure? A nice teacher? A social gospel warrior? Is that how we see him? Or do we actually see him as the eternal Son of God who has come to save sinners, to set the prisoners free, and to bring us into eternal life? Sometimes, if we're honest, we do for that. And if you don't think that we do, let me just ask you, when you start getting anxious and upset and frustrated like Mary and Joseph, what's the first thing you do? Get anxious and frustrated or bring it to Jesus? Get anxious and frustrated. Why? Because in that moment we've forgotten who Jesus is. So the first thing that we're reminded of today is that Jesus is the eternal Son. He is our Savior and our Lord, and we don't have to be frustrated. We don't have to run around wondering what's going to happen or wondering where He is. He's always with us, and we need to remember that He's our Lord and our Savior. Otherwise, we're going to lose the fear of the Lord. 
and we're going to lose direction with regards to where we go when we need help, when we need it. So the first thing that we're reminded of today is remember who he is. He's your Lord. He's your Savior. He is, in fact, the Son of God. Don't lose sight of that. Because he's the one that the Father sent to be our shepherd and to lead us out of darkness and into his light. Always keep that in mind. Now the second thing that we see revealed here is that Mary and Joseph didn't understand what Jesus said. But Jesus, nevertheless, went down with them to Jerusalem. In other words, so otherwise, so in other words, Jesus was perfectly obedient to them. Now think about that for a minute. Here's the eternal Son of God. He created those two. He created the world and everything in it. And yet, when these two say to him, well, come on, we've got to get back to Nazareth, Jesus says, all right, I'm coming with you. And he went with it. Why? Because Jesus was obedient to the word of God. He was obedient to the commandment, honor your father and your mother. As the son of God, he came to save sinners, but he also came as the example of human life, as a human being. So one of the things he's showing us is that he was obedient to the commandments, we ought to be as well, and that he honored his father and mother even when they didn't understand what he was even when they didn't understand who he was, or even when they were acting in a way that's kind of contrary to what they should be acting on. That's important for us to see. You know why? Because Jesus was obedient to the commandment, honor your father and your mother, irrespective of whether his parents got it to him or not. You know why that's important? There are a lot of people, a lot of people, who have had bad experience with parents. There are a lot of people who have had bad experience in one way or the other, sometimes very abusive relationship with parents. Sometimes their parents just didn't understand them. Sometimes their parents weren't living or acting the way they thought they should. And there are a lot of wounds that come from bad parenting. And some people will say, well, I don't know why I have to honor my father and my mother because they're terrible. Well, what does Luke say? Jesus was submissive to his parents. And since he's our example, Jesus is saying to all of us that you need to honor your father and your mother. It's finally the first commandment of the cross that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God has given you to possess. We are to honor our fathers and our mothers. By the way, there's no, um, there's no time limit on that. It doesn't mean honor your father and your mother until you're out of the house. We're to honor them until we put them in the grave. Or until they put us in the grave. We're to honor our father and mother. Why? Because ultimately, Jesus, when he was honoring his father and his mother, was honoring who? God the Father. And our parents may be a mess, but God is our true father. And if we want to honor our Father, then we'll honor the commandments that He gave us. And one of them is honoring our Father and Mother. What that means then, that anyone who's had a bad experience with parents, let me just say this. It may be that you've had a bad experience with your parents. It may be that you've had a bad experience with your, with your Father and Mother. But you have a new Father now. His name is God. And if we're going to honor Him, we need to do what he says. And so my, my point here would be that if Jesus is honoring his father and mother, then we need to honor them as well. Now how might we honor our parents even if they, we think they, they haven't been the best? How about doing this? Forgive them. Pray for them. Bless them. And I know there are some people that might have a hard time with that. But let me just tell you. Most of us here, I think all of us here, have been parents who 
We're all the parents, right? Let me just ask you a question. Were you a perfect parent? I wasn't. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. Bad mistakes. Sometimes I've said things that when I get done, I have to go back and say, man, I am sorry. That was just stupid. We all make those mistakes. And if we want people to recognize that we make mistakes, that we have to recognize that our parents did many times the best they could. Sometimes they didn't do it right. But neither did we. So let's forgive them. And let's honor them. Because they were the ones that God put into our midst to make sure that we got where we are now. Jesus is the king. If he, who is the son of God, honors his father and mother, then we can do no less than to honor our fathers and our mothers. Forgive them, bless them, help them have compassion on them. Because we want our kids to have compassion on us too. I, I can tell you one thing. I don't want my daughter to be spending her older years talking to other people saying, Man, you won't believe what my dad And she has a lot of those she can do. So we need to be just as willing to forgive as we want our children to forgive us. Third revelation that we see here actually spins out of that. You'll take note that Jesus, who's the Son of God, is living according to God's Word. He's living according to the Bible. What does that mean? It means that just as the Son of God lived according to the Word that He's the author of, so we're called to have the same honor and respect towards the Word of God that He had. Jesus never looked to the Word of God and said, yeah, you know what, I'm going to do this over here, but this is too hard, I won't do this. Or, this is something that makes sense, but this over here doesn't make a whole lot of sense, so I'm not going to do that. Or, this over here makes sense at that time, but we're not living in that time, so I'm going to do this over here. No. The way he, the way he appropriated the Word of God was saying, this is God's Word, it's the way it is, it's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and I'm going to live in it. And by living in it, he entered into everything that God the Father had for him in his ministry on earth to bless others. That's something we need to remember. Because God has placed all of us here to be a blessing to someone. How are we going to be that blessing? We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we also need to be walking according to his word. Not making excuses for why we shouldn't. Not listening to the world that says, well, that's all passe. But we are, in fact, to honor the word and live by the word just as the Lord Jesus still lives by the word. Because you realize he's alive, right? He is. And he's reigning in heaven. On what basis is he reigning? The word of God. How is he going to judge the world? According to the Word of God. The Word of God is eternally relevant. And so we need to be acting that way at all times. What that means then is that we don't act according to what the newspaper says. We don't act according to what our doctor says necessarily. We don't act according to what we think. But we think Bible, speak Bible, live Bible, act Bible. Because that is the real news. You know, all kinds of politicians out there now saying fake news, right? By the way, they're not wrong. There is a lot of fake news out there. But the fact of the matter is, while everything else might be fake news, or only a little bit true, the Word of God is completely true. Absolutely 100% unadulterated truth. And so if you want to walk in the path of righteousness, and walk into the blessing and be a blessing, then do what Jesus did. Walk according to the word. Because that word doesn't change. And God has only promised to act on one word, not what we think, not what the New York Times says, but
but what his word of the Bible says. Jesus knows that even now and walks that way. And he tells all of those who follow him, you need to walk in the same way. Actually, in John, uh, 1 John chapter 2, it says that those who would follow Jesus need to walk as he walked. And as he walked was to be obedient to the word of God. So let's consider that. Is our life a walk where we are walking according to the word? Or are we walking by a different standard? A standard that we've made up and maybe the world's made up. If we're walking by any other standard than the word, we're not following Jesus. So let's repent of wherever we're not walking with him. We're walking with him. And let's commit ourselves to walking in the world. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have given us your Son as our example. Lord Jesus, we just ask now that as a shepherd, you would lead and we would follow that you direct our paths and that we are walking according to your word just as you walk. And that you would use us to bless others just as you bless. And Lord, that we would gather other people around us to walk and follow us, the Savior and enter into heaven. And we ask this in Jesus' name, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.